So this lecture will talk about how government fails to allocate resources effectively by allocating subsidies to the market. Now, firstly, what are subsidies? Subsidies are essentially payments made by the government either to producers or buyers to encourage spending. And this basically combats a few of the market failures we've talked about previously. So it combats the idea that um, sometimes there may be positive externalities that occur through production or the consumption of certain goods and services. So this could be in the form of, say, solar energy. The government has subsidised people who um, who ins install solar panels in their homes because it helps remove pollution in, in the air or in the environment. So that's another positive externality derived from consuming solar-powered energy. Again, and also it helps um, the equitable distribution of income. Of income. When the government... Um, helps struggling businesses or businesses which are only growing um, by paying them subsidy payments so that they can remain competitive with both the international market and established businesses. And this helps the equitable distribution of income because it allows um, the government and the economy to maintain a low employ or unemployment rate. So by subsidising businesses, it helps those businesses actually create jobs and also maintain jobs and that helps people to live a reasonable standard of living. So that's the rationale behind why governments subsidise um, both producers and buyers because they want to encourage certain consumption of goods and services and they also want to keep employment low, unemployment low and the distribution of income equitable. So let's look at how this can apply to say a group a supply and demand graph. So we can see that this is the quantity of the good demanded and this is the price at which the good is demanded. So let's look at the the car industry. And as we know that the car industry is struggling relative to the rest of the world because of the high labor costs. And so um, domestic producers aren't able or struggle to be able to compete with the international producers. So again for simplicity reasons we're going to assume that the supply curve is upward sloping and the demand curve here is downward sloping. And so before any um, any government intervention we have a equilibrium price of P1 for cars and an equilibrium quantity traded at Q1. But at the moment the government isn't satisfied with the price and so they want to um, encourage more spending in the car industry so as to increase employment in this industry and create more jobs. And that's the rationale behind why the government has subsidised the car industry. So what happens is a subsidy is actually made to producers. So they want to increase the production from Q1 to say Q2 at this point here. They want to actually increase production. But as we know at if producers want to produce at Q2 here, the price of the, the cars must be at P2. But as we know, at this point here, without the subsidy, demand would be at Q3. And so because this point here, we can see that there is a surplus in supply. And this is no good because even though the producers are producing more at this price, they're not actually selling everything. And so it'd be a waste of resources. So what the government does is the government actually um, subsidizes the firms. And so what this means is that since the production here at the, at the quantity Q2 corresponds to the demand here at the price P3, for the demand to match the supply here, 
the government has to subsidize if the producers or the consumers by the difference in price from P2 minus P3. So this represents the subsidized subsidized payment. So the government pays the producers P2 minus P3. And let's say this is say a thousand minus five hundred dollars because five hundred dollars. So they pay the producer five hundred dollars for every car they sell at the quantity traded at Q2. Okay. So let's get rid of this and make the graph a little bit clearer. And now we can use uh, the welfare analysis or the cost benefit analysis that we've been using throughout this um, this series of lectures. We drag that out here. Okay, so what happens now is we're going to dislabel all these different surplus areas A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. So now that we've labeled everything, we can start seeing how subsidy can affect the overall allocative efficiency of a nation. So before a surplus or before a subsidy was introduced, we can see that the producer or the consumer surplus would be A plus B. And this means that because the equilibrium price of the cars are P1, those who derive benefit greater than P1 would be would demand cars and therefore purchase cars. And so this area here would represent the consumer surplus at the price at the equilibrium price at P1. And by the same token, we have the producer surplus E plus I. And this represents um, producers who are willing or able to produce at a cost below the equilibrium price so that they're making a profit. And because they make a profit, their marginal benefit, or MB, is greater than their marginal cost of production. And so the government expenditure without a subsidy would in fact be zero. And now we can see that the overall, um, without a subsidy, the overall total surplus would be A plus B plus E plus I. And now with a subsidy, we can see that because consumers are only paying P3, uh, they get a total consumer surplus of this triangle here. This is because the government has in fact subsidized the producers because even though they produce at P2, the government is giving the producers the, the difference of P2 minus P3 in cash so that they compensate the producers for supplying um, at Q2 even though it would cost more for them to produce. And so what happens is because the government subsidizes the producers there is no need for consumers to actually bear the burden of the increase in price and so the subsidy acts to increase the consumer surplus. So the price consumers pay is only a P3 and so those who are willing to pay anything more than P3 for a car would actually derive a economic benefit from it. So as we can see now with the subsidy, the consumer benefit is A plus B plus E plus F plus G. And as a result, the change in consumer surplus would be E plus F plus G. Now, by the same token, producers are producing at the price P2. And so everyone, every producer who is willing and able to produce at a cost less than P2 would then produce goods and services or produce cars. And so as we can see, the total produ producer surplus would actually be now B plus C plus E and plus I. And as we can see the change would be the producers gain B plus C. And so this encourages more production in the car industry and therefore create more jobs which is the ultimate goal 
for the government. But let's look at the government expenditure now. Now that they've actually subsidized, they have to subsidize this entire rectangular box. Because this is what the government is in fact paying. The government is paying the difference between P2 and P3 for every single car sold, and therefore you have to multiply that by the quantity of cars sold, which is now a Q2. So now as we can see, the government expenditure now is B plus C plus D plus E plus H plus F plus G. And that's everything in here. So we, this is also the same as Let's put an asterisk next to here. This is the same as P2 minus P3 times by Q2. And that's the government subsidy paid in the car industry there. And so the change in government expenditure would be that. So I'm not going to write that out again, but you can see that the change would be all this. So they've actually paid that much more money to producers to actually produce at Q2 because they want to keep more jobs. Now you can see with the subsidy, the total surplus would in fact be, so this is, before I, before I work out the total surplus, I must note that this is actually a negative sign because the government is spending that much money. They're not receiving that much money. And so now we can see that the total surplus in the economy would be A, well, this is pretty complicated maths, but it's pretty messy. So we get A plus B plus E plus F plus G plus B plus C plus E plus I. But you have to take away everything here as well. So you have A plus B plus B minus B, which is only 1B, plus C minus C, which cancels out, plus E plus E, so 2E minus E, which you're left with 1E. Also, plus, plus uh, F, B minus F, so that cancels out. Plus G, B minus G here, so that cancels out. And you get plus I here. But you also have to take away um, D. And you also have to take away H. And so now we can see that the total change in total surplus would be negative D minus H. And that represents this triangular area here, which is also called the dead weight loss. So now we can see that although the government, when they subsidize the car industry, they're actually increasing the production and they're actually... Uh, decreasing the cost from P1 to P2, P3 of what consumers actually pay for the car and increase the price of the car from P1 to P2 of what the producers are receiving for the car, they've actually caused uh, a deadweight loss. And this may be, a, may be a pretty tricky topic to understand because as you can see, consumers benefit, producers benefit, but the government's worse, worse off. But we must note that the government is also part of the economy and the way that they get their money is actually from taxation from producers and consumers. So although it, sees, it seems on the surface that producers and consumers are better off in terms of the economy, the government has to borrow or, or tax to receive the money so that they can spend on the car industry and therefore this represents an inefficiency in the allocation of resources in the form of a deadweight loss in the economy. So although a subsidy can help uh, help positive externalities or help help um, increase consumption so that positive externalities occur, or it helps uh, the equitable distribution of income in the form of low employment, so that, for example, in the car industry, they since they produce more at Q2, they employ more people. This is all at the cost of spending more money than it than it um than it can and so this creates a deadweight loss of d minus h so although ostensibly it seems that the government is actually helping producers and consumers become better off in terms of their living standards 
the entire economy or the total surplus or the total living standards of the economy has actually decreased in the form of this deadweight loss, which is negative D minus H.